Good evening and welcome to TMI Live 62, The Gutenberg Galaxy, The Making of Typographic Man. As we were at uh, episode 62 of this almost weekly event, when I think of the number 62, I think about the Gutenberg Galaxy, which came out in 1962. Um, <clears throat> and for the last few episodes, we've been looking through the archives um, by the year. I think we started in 58 uh, or maybe 59. Anyway, instead of pulling out the file for 62, um, I thought we'd look a little bit at the Gutenberg Galaxy, um, considering that it's one of uh, Marshall McLuhan's biggest books, uh, and it came out in 1962. Uh, also out in 1962 was The Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, which is an interesting convergence of titles. Um, so the Gutenberg Galaxy, I do have a bunch of things. Oh, greetings, Sirene. Uh, hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I do have a bunch of things um, around here regarding the Gutenberg Galaxy. Nice bits of, of memorabilia, such as this item here. This is a leather-bound presentation copy. If I can get it out of the case. Uh, maybe it won't want to come. Um, of the Gutenberg Galaxy, which was... Uh, presented to him, to the author, that is. It's got those funky purple inside papers. Um, it's got a, a few notes by Marshall in it, actually. Uh, and it has, uh, I believe the signature, signature in there is the book binder, um, but I'm not totally sure about that. I can't really make it out. Someone O'Hara, 1963. Um, it does have on the inside page here, this book received the Governor General's Literary Award for 1962, um, which is uh, kind of neat. And indeed it did. Um, it was a, a big deal. It won the Governor General's uh, Award for Nonfiction in 1962, um, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, another copy which I have here, pardon me, hardbound first edition says for Eric from dad and uh, 1962 uh, also we have in the back here an arms forces liter liberty pass uh, from the USAF uh, 61st supply squadron Malmstrom Air Force Base for Eric McLuhan um, 30th of May 1961 uh, Dad was at the time of this, the publishing of this book in the United States Air Force. Uh, and this was the copy that um, I guess Marshall had sent to Dad down in the States. And it just simply says, for Eric from Dad, uh, which is perhaps a little bit telling as um, later books were a little more descriptive in their inscription <laughs> to Dad. So, um, Eric would come back from the Air Force and start to work with his father, Marshall, uh, at this point. Uh, well, let's say they weren't there yet. This is um, a neat addition because, well, for one thing, because it has Eric McLuhan's notes in it. Uh, it also has a couple pages here of corrections by Marshall McLuhan. He had uh, gone through the book at a later date and noted uh, corrections, I guess, maybe for a later edition. Um, and this has, uh, his notes in it, which is pretty neat. I'm not going to go through them all one by one, because there's a lot of things to go through. Another really neat thing here, um, are a pair of notes, uh, from Marshall. I'll just put a, a mark in there. This one in particular, uh, which my dad took aside. Uh, and tucked in here it says with the electronic age our central nervous system goes outside globally our physical organs go inside the brain blessings dad uh, this is a note to eric from marshall McLuhan when um, marshall had just hit on this idea that uh, the electric age put our central nervous system outside our body globally uh, there's another little note here note electronic and this is from a different sheet uh, this is something else completely but it's another note by marshall it says note electronic membrane around the earth is simultaneous 
field equals central nervous system outward. For first time, man has put his CNS out and his body in. Uh, the That which is out is numb, see galaxy. Consciousness reverts to the non-outer equals the bodily organs. Brain now numb, body now aware equals the unconscious cum ESP as formula of new human condition. Uh, pretty cool notes from Marshall McLuhan uh, to his son, Eric. Um, it's important to note I'm not going to go through the whole book, obviously. We'd be here for weeks. But um, to put a little bit of context, the Gutenberg Galaxy came out in 1962. And um, in 1962, Marshall was also in the middle of revisions for what would become Understanding Media, the Extensions of Man in 1964. That was uh, developed from a project which was published in 1960 called the Report on the Project in Understanding New Media. Um, that was commissioned by the National Association of Educational Broadcasters in the United States, um, in which Marshall was working on between 1958 and 1960. Uh, the report was published in 1960, and then it was rewritten and rewritten and worked over uh, for the next several years to come out in 64 as Understanding Media, the Extensions of Man. Um, in the meantime, Marshall also worked on this, um, and the whole, the process of uh, this book, The Gutenberg Galaxy, was, was quite involved. Um, he enlisted the help of many graduate students uh, and overtook a section of uh, the Kelly Library at the University of Toronto. Um, and it was a, a rather large production. And I'm, I'm quite fortunate that my grandmother was a scrappy, scrapbooky kind of lady. And um, she kept a scrapbook for the Gutenberg Galaxy, um, conveniently scrapbook. Um, we have a few of these scrapbooks here in the, uh, in the McLuhan Institute, uh, one for understanding media, one for the medium is the massage, uh, one for the Gutenberg Galaxy. There's a family one and uh, there's a death book, which is um, almost twice the size of this. It's huge and it's full of clippings and notes of condolence and things um, from all kinds of people around Marshall's death in December 31st, 1980. Um, but this scrapbook is um, rather a lot of fun. There's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, because um, the Gutenberg Galaxy won the Governor General's Award for nonfiction in 1962, um, there's quite a lot of press about it. Um, some interesting things. Uh, luckily we, we get some, some vintage, uh, advertising there, but, um, here's, a, a grouping of, uh, Governor General award winners, uh, there on the back and where's Marshall? There's, there's Marshall right there. Uh, people looking on. I'm only going to glance, uh, gloss over things here because there really is a lot um, here's a note, March 4th, congratulations, congratulations, Marshall, uh, with the Governor General's Award. You really deserve it. And I'm thrilled, uh, I'm as thrilled as you at the recognition. Um, the something, something rides high with you. I am glad that you are remaining in Canada and I hope for, and I hope for your whole career. And this is from L.K. Shook, um, who is a notable figure at the Pontifical Institute. I believe that's the, um, the Pontifical Institute's mark there. Marshall was very friendly with them, as you might imagine. Uh, here addressed to Marshall McLuhan from the Canada Council. This is a nice note, along with, um, I think it would have been a medal, uh, Canada Council, Dr. Marshall McLuhan, March 29th, 1963. Uh, the Canada Council presents you with $1,000 as a cash prize to accompany the Governor General's Award, which you have received this year in the category Critical and Expository Prose English. 
The Council wishes to express its admiration of your work and its feeling of satisfaction that it is able to cooperate with the Committee for the Governor General's Awards in providing recognition of our best uh, Canadian writers. Um, so that was very nice for uh, Marshall, uh, a professor with five, maybe six children at this point and, and a wife at home. Um, there's all kinds of reviews in here. Um, this one, I'm not sure. Oh, this is from Etc. The Review of General Semantics, Volume 21, Number 4. Uh, it's a review by James Reaney. Uh, Change in the Invention of Printing, Gutenberg Galaxy, Making of Typographic Man by Marshall McClure, 1962, 595. Um, starts off here. Perhaps the best way to put one's mind around this book is to recall the kind of insight found in another Canadian thinker, Harold Innes. From his empire and communications, I gather that the Roman Empire would have been impossible or very much different without the invention of papyrus. The Romans not only used papyrus, however, the kind of communication possible through it used them. We shape our tools and thereafter. That's kind of funny because I just got done teaching uh, the chapter on writing and understanding media, which has to do about papyrus in the Roman Empire. Anyway, um, to skip through a little bit. Uh, oh, he, he quotes Marshall here. Our, our web metaphor. Uh, let's see here. McLuhan, who regards his own work as a continuation of Innes's, uses this example and his whole book presents a model of our Western world caught for the past five centuries in the web of typography. Our web metaphor may perhaps lead the reader to suppose that McLuhan is against the invention of printing, but no, because, quote, the theme of this book is not that there is anything good or bad about print but that the unconsciousness of the effect of any force is a disaster, especially a force that we have made ourselves. Uh, and on and on and on. Let's, let's move on, because uh, we have a really cool thing here. A telegram. Uh, stamped March 7, 1963, 5.31 p.m. Uh, Toronto, Ontario. Marshall McLuhan, Esquire, 29 Wells Hill, Toronto. Presentations of Governor General's Awards, Friday, March 29, 6 p.m. RSVP Secretary, Canada Council, Ottawa, Northrop Fry. Uh, this is a telegram from Northrop Fry to Marshall McLuhan advising him about the uh, awards ceremony for um, the, uh, the Governor General's Award. Uh, which is pretty cool. I believe Northrop Fry was on the committee, um, which awarded Marshall the uh, the general governor general's award, um, which is notable. Um, and more and more. Um, this is a this is a neat one. Oops, I have to be careful with these things, but I'll try and, and hold this up to show you. It's A View of Communication, Arnold Rockman, Toronto Daily Star, July 7, 1962. Uh, Marshall McLuhan, author of The Mechanical Bride, uh, Understanding Media. Uh, no, there was an uh, article titled that. Um, the Five Cent Sensorium and others has just brought out a new book, The Gutenberg Galaxy, The Making of Typographic Man. Like his other publications, it is full of imaginative and sometimes even brilliant insights. This time, McLuhan, a professor, professor of English at St. Michael's College at the University of Toronto, tries to tackle the sort of problem that few people have even considered. How does the form of a message influence the receiver? What are the built-in biases of the different media of communications? How do manuscript, print, radio, film, and television differ in their authority and in their effects on the audience? Uh, Marshall, uh, sorry, McLuhan attacks the polar extreme states, which, quote, we recognize as the inevitable legacy of literacy in any culture or in any period of history. But he replaces them with his polar extreme 
two-termed oppositions in place of the individual versus the state, thought versus feeling, art versus commerce, science versus humanism. He gives us pre-literate versus literature, oral versus visual, simultaneity versus lineality, east versus west, uh, and so on. At the end, he says, uh, why isn't it enough? Suppose we accept for the moment that the invention of the phonetic alphabet quote, causes modern science and technology, all right, then why isn't it enough of a cause for Muslim countries? Arabic has a perfectly good phonetic alphabet. If the acceptance of the phonetic alphabet is a necessary precursor of science and technology, how is it possible for Japan, which uses a combination of Chinese ideograms and a katakana syllabic, to take over the whole of Western science and technology and even improve it? McLuhan has written a mad, wild, undisciplined book, and yet it may also turn out to be required reading for anyone who wants to try to understand the seemingly formless age in which we live. Interesting. There are further things. Uh, Gutenberg and the alphabet blamed for our neuroses. I thought I would share this one. Um, this is notable. The, uh, the portrait there is by Irma Kusil. Um, who hockey fans might notice because uh, Irma Cousel was, I believe, the official portraitist of the Hockey Hall of Fame for many, many, many years. Um, and she also did a couple of portraits of Marsha McLuhan. I have another one here. Uh, Perspective, Toronto Star, Saturday, July 27, 28, 1962. Controversial is an adjective lightly applied to many people. Edmonton-born Marshall McLuhan has earned it honestly and on a worldwide scale. His theories about electronic men, communications, and the impact of mass media have been idolized as revolutionary visions, but scorned as so much hot air. Note this is 1962, and uh, a lot of people think Marshall was only uh, popular after understanding media, but in fact, quote, I think he's crazy. Unquote, says a literary friend of McLuhan's, quote, but he's taught me more about communications than any 10 sane men. Ironically, McLuhan is a communications expert who has trouble making himself understood. He has developed a special vocabulary of descriptive terms, and you have to be hip to understand him at all. Those who don't dig his language are inclined to dismiss him as an intellectual con man. In 1951, McLuhan shed new light on selling practices with Mechanical Bride, a study of hidden meaning in advertising. The next year, the Ford Foundation gave him $40,000 to start a seminar in mass communication at the University of Toronto, where he is a professor of English. He published some of his findings in a small but far-reaching magazine, Explorations. By 1959, he had become the man the U.S. Office of Education had to have to direct a project on, quote, understanding media. With the publication of his new book, The Gutenberg Galaxy, McLuhan, now 31, has become unavoidable, I'm sorry, now 51, has become unavoidable in the field of communication. Anyone studying the media by which men communicate with each other, language, television, radio, telephone, movies, books, dance, graphics, even money, has to come to terms with Marshall McLuhan. McLuhan can be right about things that nobody else has even thought about, and often monstrously wrong. Perhaps his most important single perception is that the impact of any message depends on the medium by which it is projected, that form is content. Television, he says, is the most effective medium for education, because you receive information simultaneously on all planes. Books present only a lineal image and are obsolete. Personally, he's a man of intriguing paradoxes. Much of his conversation is beyond all but disciples, and yet he prides himself on his knowledge of slang. He has rejected all linear logic, and yet is a member of the Roman Catholic Church, which subscribes heavily to the linear logic of Aristotle. He is an expert on electronic man, but has a bookish background, two degrees at the University of Manitoba and two more at Cambridge. Genius or eccentric, this is a man who, like Jules Verne, has attempted the difficult task of understanding the events of the present in terms of their significance for the future. The next generation will be his judge. The present is profiting from contact with his provocatively fertile mind. 
Um, there's a lot more. Here is one toward Electronic Man by John Wayne, uh, a review of the Gutenberg Galaxy. Um, he was a friend of Marshall's. I'll just read the, the last bit here, last paragraph. Not all McLuhan's ideas are equally sound, but there are moments when the book seems to jump the rails altogether. By my own attitude, but my own attitude is that the more lavishly a man gives, the less right we have to cavil over detail. After all, if someone gave you a whole sack full of banknotes, would you complain if two or three of them turned out to be duds? I think not. And those who will approach the Gutenberg galaxy in a similar spirit will find it endlessly stimulating, informative, and, in no very long run, liberating. And more and more. There's uh, one here from the Fort Worth Star. Uh, let's get the title. Fort Worth Star Telegram, Friday morning, October 26, 1962, back when they did more than one daily edition ex-resident likes life with author uh, and it's an interview with Marshall's wife Corinne uh, who put together this scrapbook which is very nice uh, mentions Gutenberg Galaxy um, <clears throat> here's one by Ronald Bates titles expect violent reaction to this book London Free Press let there be no doubt about it this is both a very exciting and a very important book written by a Canadian scholar who has had a growing reputation abroad in connection with his first book, The Mechanical Bride. The excitement and importance seen by reading the book will be confirmed by listening to the violent reactions aroused by it. The effective stature of a man with ideas is frequently in direct proportion to the resistance he arouses. The trouble is, he is, that, the trouble is that it is almost always difficult to distinguish between an original thinker with a radical idea of far-reaching implications and a nut haunted by an ID fixe. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, last paragraph. Ours in, is an age in which there is much, almost constant, talk about the mass media. The Gutenberg galaxy has much to suggest with its shrewd appraisals of the structures of communication and their impact on the human mind. This is certainly a book that will have a great influence on the continuing conversation of man with himself and with his forms of outering or uttering. Uh, a review by John Mole, Journalism Quarterly. Uh, let's see if there's any other interesting ones. Where are we? We're getting on. Um, lots more reviews. Uh, from Odysseus to Robin Caruso and back. Uh, a quote. In short, Harold Innes was the first person to hit upon the process of change as implicit in the forms of media technology. The present book is a footnote of explanation to his work. Um, and Marshall said various places that his own work was a footnote to Innes. And here he does it in the Gutenberg Galaxy. Uh, the author here comments, The self-designation seems overly modest. If we recall that Innes once described his own work as a footnote to Graham Wallace, then a simple dismay about the increasing prescience of bothersome footnotes should reach overwhelming proportions. However, the lineage indicated in this tribute is important. McLuhan has gone magnificently beyond the beginnings of this intellectual development and absorbed a great pantheon of discoveries. But is it possible that there's something quite unique in our history that promotes these insights? Ennis has had very little impact on American communications research to date. McLuhan will have more. But perhaps the fabric that gives rise to these hypotheses places us in a better position to understand than the others are understand them than others are. Uh, John Simon review, Pilgrim of the Audio Tactile. Uh, and more. Print changed the world and McLuhan tells how. Tony Emery, Department of History, Victoria College. Uh, and so on and so on and so on. Up from Gutenberg, a study of printed man. Uh, oh, here's, so, okay, this is interesting. Um, this is from Echistics of November 1962. Echistics was the magazine 
um, of, uh, uh, what was his first name? Anyway, Doxiatis was the, the guy's name. And uh, he had these famous uh, cruises. He brought all these um, intellectuals and thinkers. He brought Marshall McLuhan and Buckminster Fuller. Um, that was actually how they met, I believe, to Greece, to Athens, to meet. And they would meet and then hop on a ship and tour the Aegean for a couple of days and have discussions, then have a closing meeting. Um, and here they talk about the Gutenberg galaxy. Uh, the connection is uh, Jacqueline Terwitt, I believe, who was part of the early explorations, communications and culture group, uh, and then went on to work uh, with the Sakistics thing. And I believe she introduced Doxiatis to McLuhan, etc. Uh, LA Times. Toward an under... Sorry. Uh, toward an understanding of electronic man. Uh, a full page, page 16, of the La Los Angeles Times calendar. Uh, Lawrence Upton review. Uh, and there's more and more. Oh, oh, here we go. We'll close it with this. Victoria College, Toronto 5, Canada, February 25th, 1963. Marshall McLuhan Esquire, 29 Wells Hill. Dear Mr. McLuhan, I'm very pleased to be able to inform you that at a recent meeting of the Governor General's Awards Committee, the nomination for the award in critical and expository prose in the English language was for your book, The Gutenberg Galaxy. Unless I hear from you to the contrary, I shall assume your acceptance of the award. The award carries with it a cash prize of $1,000. It is hoped that, according to the usual custom, His Excellency the Governor General of Canada will present these awards. If so, an invitation to receive the award in Ottawa will be sent to you later. May I add the personal gratitude of the committee for the pleasure your books gave them and for your distinguished contribution to Canadian literature. Yours sincerely, Northrop Fry, Chairman, Governor General's Award Committee. Uh, signed by him there. And that's a nice thing, followed up by, uh, by that telegram, as we saw. Uh, there's a few more things there, but um, you get the idea. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Maybe next week we'll go through the file and look at um, what else Marshall was up to in 1962. It's a big file. Um, thanks for being here. Check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, the McLuhan Institute.com has links to it all. Take care of each other. Good night.